this story is kind of interesting, isn't it? It says that Spotify is denying reports that Joe Rogan could bolt streaming giant this year. So, if you're familiar, I've spoken to this before, but a couple of big people from Spotify got let go or fired or, you know, executives. They never really get fired because it's bad for their reputation. So, they always kind of, you know, leave with mutual consent, but usually it's a firing. And the first person that kind of raised the alarm for me in terms of podcast business stuff was that Dawn Ostroff woman, who, if I'm not mistaken was someone who was around the responsible when the first wave of podcasts got signed exclusively to Spotify. And that included the Joe Budden one. And I think Joe Rogan came just after that. Um, so these are really important people who kind of helped to spearhead the podcast sort of platform on Spotify. And then another guy has recently got fired also. Um, I think his name is on here somewhere. What's his name? Uh, I think it's on the article when I read it. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, some dude, we're going to read it when we get on here. He's been fired also. So I guess the rumours are that Spotify might break ranks with Rogan because of how much it's going to cost to keep him. Because the initial deal, if again, these comedians are so chatty patty, but when the initial deal came out, we were led to believe it was 100 million for three years. But then the likes of Burt Kreischer, Tom Segura, and a few other people basically let it slip because our theatre money was just so crazy that it was basically somewhere around the 300 million. I think it probably was one of those deals where it was like, 200 million guaranteed with the extra 100 and maybe 200 um, on certain sort of like um, things he has to kind of hit, right? In terms of downloads, new subscribers, all these sort of benchmarks. And obviously he completely smashed them to pieces and he obviously got everything. So I think my idea was that most likely it was like a free four year deal around 200 to 400 million, which is nuts to think about, but that would be the one to do. And also think about it. He did that as a licensing deal. So it wasn't even that they owned the IP, licensing only. So if it, when the deal ends, he can just go back to uploading it onto flipping Apple Podcasts and putting the shows again on flipping YouTube. Crazy. But anyway, let's continue. Um, cause, you know, Spotify trying to make sure they tell people, no, he's not going to leave because I'm sure it's cost a lot of money to keep him on the platform, but also I'm sure a lot of people only have Spotify premium to listen to Joe Rogan. I know I own, that's the reason why I, I bought it. So I'd imagine a lot of people are probably the same, if not worse than me. It says here, Spotify is denying report that Joe Rogan could bolt the streaming giant this year after his contract expires. Rogan's future has become a topic of intense speculation, particularly in light of the fact that his relationship with Spotify management was frayed, according to news site's Semaphore. The news site claimed over the weekend that Rogan could bolt Spotify and take its 18, 11 million listeners with him. 11 million. God damn it. As a star podcaster contract with the Sweden-based audio platform was due to run out later this year. When reached by the Post, a spokesperson for Spotify disputed Semaphore's reporting, insisting Rogan's contract does not expire this year. So maybe it's a, a three-year contract with one-year option on it. I'm not really too sure, but it's definitely meant to be expiring soon because he got the deal around the pandemic time. That's what made it really crazy, right? He got the, in the pandemic time, he got this crazy 200 million deal, moved to Austin and just living a good life. And if I'm not mistaken, the thing that's crazy about Rogan is that from paying attention, I'm pretty sure before Spotify... He was making, if I'm not mistaken, last time I remember hearing people say it was somewhere between like 30 to 50 million per year without Spotify anyway. So he was making that from the podcast. And I guess it doesn't include like ads and stuff that like he was just making that from just, you know, putting the podcast out and shit, which is a crazy amount. So he would have easily made that 400 mil in a few years anyway, but he got that up front. So, you know, it was, it was a no brainer. He went to Spotify really. Um, a Semaphore spokesperson told the Post that the new site updates the original story with a link to a New York Times article from last year, which came as a contract ran for three and a half years with a possibility of more. In late 2020, Rogan and his stand up, yeah, technically it's not really over though, isn't it? But I guess it's maybe it's a three and a half deal, three and a half year with a three and a half year deal with maybe an option of the first refusal. Cause a lot of these people do this, right? They have like a first refusal thing, which means that you have to give them the option to, give you an extension before you go somewhere else type of thing in late 2020 rogan a standard comedian and mma announcer whose podcast you experience has a massive low following of millions of google owned youtube uh, of millions on google owned youtube signed an exclusive rights deal with spotify worth north of 200 million rogan was recruited by spotify by courtney holt who was head of um studios and video but holt who played a key role in signing a-list superstars like podcasting people like prince harry Meghan Markle, and barack obama so obama left spotify in april last year so the person responsible for bringing rogan there left so that's why it gets a bit fishy and a bit dicey but again i think rogan's such a big whale for them that they'll be dumb to let him go because you know what's going to happen the moment he gets let go the you know platforms like rumble and even this new one that flipping what's he's on that um 
all these kids are streaming on now like kick i'm sure even apple might even try and make him a deal like it's, it's gonna happen maybe even youtube might come up because youtube us i saw some they, they uploaded some feature on my studios where you got a podcast thing on youtube now which is weird so maybe they even, even youtube might end up getting him you never know host departure severed a key link that tied rogan to the company according to semaphore last year rogan's frustration with public demands to curb what he concerned his podcast bowled over prompting him to threaten to quit the streaming giant i will quit he said if it gets to a point that i can't do it anymore where i have to do it in some sort of weird way where i walk on eggshells and mind my p's and q's fuck that rogan said in march 22 episode last week rogan was accused of making anti-semitic comment when discussing rep, rep representative ilan omar the controversial member of the squad who was boofed booted off the house foreign affairs committee for a past statement about israel and the podcaster's free-flowing style is willingness to host controversial vaccine skeptics and conspiracy theories including Alice Jones and others have been a source of unrest within the ranks and file of Spotify. Rogan has come under fire for his um, criticism of transgender activists and their supporters, many of whom have accused podcasts of transphobia. I love how these articles make Rogan seem like he's a fucking devil in it. Like, if anything, the podcast is maybe getting a little bit annoying because he only seems to have a particular side on to talk about particular topics. He doesn't like to have the opposite side. Like the recent one he had with that Carl Kalinsky guy was amazing because that Carl Kalinsky guy absolutely destroyed Ron DeSantis with actual facts about him and his policies and how he governs and shit. And Rogan was kind of caught off guard, you know what to say? Because he's been a you know a DeSantis fanboy for a while, but doesn't really want to engage in the other side of the conversation. So that's the only criticism I have with Rogan when it comes to politics. Again, I don't listen to it anyway, but he tends to only have people that kind of agree with his side of things and is not really open to other things. But that that's normal though, because he's older again. Older rich dudes just tend to get a little bit more and it happens to my parents, the same thing. Like, you know, your parents just become they just double down on what they believe in. The older and richer they get, it just is what it is. Um, last year, Spotify CEO Daniel Ek apologized to staffers after an online video of Rogan uttering a racial slur went viral. Rogan apologized, saying that the horrible montage of him using the N-word was the most regretful and shameful thing he's ever done and to, had to address, and that the remarks were taken out of context. Oh, yeah, I remember, he said nigger, innit? I think he said some monkey thing, right? Niggers, uh, some joke about like monkeys and calling them niggers at some New York thing or something. <laughs> and I think Dave Chappelle came out and said he's he's fine, he can say nigga. <laughs> so he gave him an end pass. All right. Both I came under pressure to terminate relationship with Rogan in February last year following a podcast in appearance by Dr. Rupert Malone. So Robert Malone, a biochemist who worked on the MNRA technology um, that was used to a basis of two of the most widely distributed COVID vaccines. Malone had been banned from Twitter and YouTube for allegedly spreading misinformation related to COVID. Man, the COVID times on YouTube and social media was so horrible. Anything that kind of skirted away from just vaccine propaganda was treated like flipping hate speech. Or it was hate speech. You remember back in the day? like covid talk was horrible now it's a bit more nuanced and a bit more informed and people are willing to have like debates but before legitimately if you legitimately said you didn't want to take the vaccine people would legitimately look at you like you had a flipping swastika tattooed in the middle of your forehead <laughs> just because you didn't want to take it because you had some you had some reservations about a vaccination <laughs> oh excuse me for having some doubts <laughs> honestly i'm so glad covid time is over the pandemic lockdown era debates were awful everything around it was awful man anyway rogan's interview sessions with malone prompted canadian american rock and neil young to pull his music from spotify oh yeah neil young in it remember that that was a proper virtue signaling nonsense in it but who cares about neil young in it like spotify is in the midst of a transition period last month Ake announced that the company had laid off six percent of its six thousand and six hundred strong workforce that's very ominous isn't it six percent of its six thousand and six hundred workforce Ooh, conspiracy theory so what if i also announced the departure of don't also have the company's chief content and uh, advertising business officer ostroff lizard um company-wide recreate organization young's former bandmate with Crosby, Stills, and Nash and Young, and Dave Crosby and Stephen Sellis, Still, sorry, Graham Nash, followed the suit as did John Mishu, Johnny Mishu, and author Roxanne Gray. Look at these people that jumped off Spotify. Who cares? Right? Look at these people. 
Joni Mitchell, Roxanne Gray, that self-help guru, Breen Brown, a, a, a Grammy Award winner, India Irie. All right, Sophia Bush. Yeah, cool. Despite calls to Baz Rogan, X stood behind the podcaster. Who's co- Again, it's easy to choose Rogan over fucking Joni Mitchell. It's easy to choose Rogan over Roxanne Gray. Really, Roxanne Gay, so you're not really missing much. Anyway, but yeah, um, what do you guys think? Do you guys think Spotify will end up cutting ties with Rogan? I don't necessarily think so. I think he just makes too much money for these platforms. Like I said, with me, he even though I'm a music head and I listen to a lot of my kind of alternative, more so band music on Spotify, and I tend to kind of keep all my trappy house, no trappy, yeah, even dance music type stuff and hip hop stuff to Apple Music. But the reason why I got Spotify Premium was because of the um, Joe Rogan experience. And I imagine a lot of people like that out there like me. So I'm sure they saw a huge bump in subscribers. They didn't release the numbers, but I don't think they're going to let him go. I can't see that happening personally. I don't think that's a thing. I think these, I think these journalists would love it to be the case for him to get deplatformed or whatever, but that's not happening. He's just too big. Simple as that. He's just too big, mate. 